Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> I just uh, love you guys. Amen. Amen. But uh, I listened to a couple of videos tonight. And, you know, I love my sister uh, Tiffany Twidwell. Hey, very down, salt of the earth kind of person, okay? <laughs> she just she just opens herself up and she tries to share, you know, the work and the will of the Spirit of God in her and the stirrings and uh, I, you know, those kind of sisters and brothers Amen. As babes, all right, that God's able to speak through if we'll listen. It bothered me, though, that she seemed to be in a little bit of a turmoil, and I totally understand it. <laughs> you know, any of you who have spent any time out here on YouTube, amen, Jesus, offering yourself, all right, and you're sharing your walk of faith with generally the assembly and whoever else may come along, you know. It's always been my belief, amen, Jesus, and that's the reason that I continue, you know, to offer what I believe are the pearls of wisdom written in the Word of God. And which, you know, also the Word tells us not to cast them before the swine. So I've always been of the belief that this being the format of which the Word of God is being shared that for the most part, those who are watching these videos on this particular YouTube page uh, are not unbelievers. They're believers seeking for the truth. <coughs> While well, I'm on that subject, <laughs> amen, Jesus, uh, watched another video about this escaping from Bethel. Oh, yeah, yeah, in the first few minutes, of this person's introduction and I don't know I guess he's in the process of trying to help others to see whatever error or fault some other brothers are ministering and I, I know I have seen some really outrageous amen Jesus what they call spirit filled meetings uh, drunkenness and acting just oh so foolish uh, and as part of a movement apparently that is taking place and we, we the Lord warned us of this humanistic movement the Kundalini, uh, Kundalini spirit the the false circumcision the false okay uh, baptism it's on the outer not the inner okay um, we've talked about that already and uh, but anyway, the thing that disturbed me was here this person is attempting to unveil, okay, the lies and deception when he makes the statement <laughs> that there are a lot of born-again believers out here who don't study the Word of God. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, there isn't a born again, born from above, filled, and you have to have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit to be born from above, the inner man, the seat of righteousness, the seat of Christ in us, okay? You cannot have that rebirth and not have a hunger and a thirst for the Word of God, for the righteousness of the Word of God. It's impossible. It, 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 you are not born again if you do not have a hunger and a thirst for the righteousness of the word of God you have not been born again you've not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and anybody who tells you that you can be born again and not read the word of God that's one of the biggest it's one of the biggest lies out here. It's the beginning of the deception. 
Everything else stems from that. You can... Oh, Father God, help them to see the plan that you've given us so that in the end, and during this period of time, that the wheat not sin against you, you've kept them from being awakened. You have kept them from receiving the promise of the Holy Spirit because they had not the faith to believe in the Holy Spirit. Baptism. But God still loves them because he knows what's in their heart. It's just that they could not receive the measure of faith of which allowed them to believe in the greater that was to come after the fundamental teachings, after John, the, after the call to repentance, then the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we've talked about that. There are very rare occasions of which at the time of your water, symbolic water baptism, there can be a rebirth. Generally speaking, it doesn't happen that way. And there can be an exception wherein, in Paul's case, prior to receiving the water, symbolic representation, you can have already received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. These are the exceptions to the rule. The rule is you receive the water baptism as a symbolic representation of the call to repentance of which at first the ground of your heart must be furrowed so that it might receive the seed of faith and that that seed as the gardener in the garden might add the fertilizer. There's a process. Father God. Folks, the vast majority of the so-called Christian faith is divided between the weak and the tares. And according to the word of God, the vast majority of the so-called Christian faith and our religion in general are the children of the bond woman, the natural realm, the children of the free room realm, the children from the free woman are from the spiritual realm, basic, fundamental, very simple to listen to and hear concepts. This is no big mystery. That's why our mother, those of us who have been born again, born of the Spirit, born from above, our mother is heavenly Jerusalem, the free woman. More are the children of the bond woman, the natural realm, the tares, the natural man, in a religious covering, than there are of the children of the free woman. Now the two of them have been growing up together in the garden, God's house, these households of faith, and the separation begins when the Holy Spirit comes upon the wheat the vast majority of the believers who have yet and who are the wheat and sincere in their heart regarding their desire to want to be led by the Spirit of God and do the will of the Father. God knows who they are. It's not in their heads, but it's in their hearts. They're going to receive the baptism, the promise that was promised to them, the salvation of the souls, souls through the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain. So, so many people, like my sister uh, 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 Twidwell, I, I, I can't think of her first name, 
uh, Nancy or something. I'm not sure what the name is. But anyway, uh, praise God. Uh, and a lot of turmoil because it, oh nice praise God it's a bloody mess out here the swords are just a filleting and you know some are doing it in genuine love you know hope and a desire okay the cutting of the flesh or the natural cords the natural mind that attach a brother and sister they're under the bondage of the natural cardinal mind. Okay, that's the whole thing about Isaiah 58. If you would just read it, you'd see what takes place when the light of God goes before us, and then we begin to enter into these households and set our brothers and sisters free. All right? It's through the baptism of the Holy Spirit that they are awakened. The ministers of fire that remove the shaft from off the wheat. The <laughs> false pretense. Okay. Uh, the outer shell. So, praise God. Tiffany Twidwell, that's what it was. Uh, anyway, uh, so I shared with her what I could, and I hope it was of some value. Because I, I don't know anybody out here who who isn't genuinely seeking after the will of the Father and, and hoping and praying that, it, that the Holy Spirit speak through them to help the brothers and sisters and to encourage them and strengthen them, but at the same time speaking the truth in love, okay, who have not had to deal with their own interpersonal turmoil regarding the sword. Okay? <sighs> it's double-edged. It, it cuts, but it heals at the same time. I mean, there's, I, shared a, I shared quite a bit with her. and it, To each uh, man and woman to their own time and season. They're, they have their own season in which they come into these things. And, uh, those who are, have believed by faith in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and have actually been born again, born from above. It's a, it's a road less traveled, uh, which few find and stay on. Because it's very easy to become bitter. And we shared about the bitter root that can spring up between brethren in and among the assembly. And that's what a lot of these divisions in the in the in the so called Christian faith, which we see on the outer, which is not. But nonetheless that's what we see. Okay. But we're not to judge by the seeing of the eye or the hearing of the ear in the natural realm. So even though that's what we might see, okay, the word of God says that the body of Christ the true church assembly is not divided. Okay. So, <clears throat> that turmoil takes place. You're listening to, hearing people go back and forth with one another. I've participated in it. As my sister Lynn has pointed out, no question about it. But after the last couple of years, okay, I don't care what it is, we, as you teach, you are taught. You are going to grow. That's for all of us. So after a period of time, and I, I started sharing this about a year ago, about, you know, had you been here for the first year, you would have seen a lot of my going out there, okay? Because at first, I just, oh my God, I couldn't believe the things that were being shared out here. It just, <laughs> uh, I couldn't, you know, it's like the uh, prophet uh, said, said, woe unto me if I don't say something. Because <laughs> that's what you feel, there's a fire on. You know, you, you, you have to say something. You can't let people just keep saying these things. And knowing that it's being passed on to others and not say something. 
Even the word itself tells to us that their blood shall be held, you'll be held responsible to be upon your hands. Hands represent your ministry. So don't let your ministry, I mean, and so there's that turmoil. Oh, geez, I should say something, you know, but Jesus said I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. It's in the thought and intents of the heart, my brothers and sisters. And none of us are not going to go through this because you've got to, and if you're going to be used of by God, okay, with the sword of truth, this helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the whole all of these are symbolic representations of our being transformed in the likeness and the image of Jesus Christ. This process, of that work, amen, Jesus, will draw you to being used of by God to speak that word in truth, in love. Yes, there's a way of doing it and a wrong way of doing it. And don't think any of you are perfect about doing it because you're all going to fall short. All right, but hopefully somebody else, like my sister Lynn, will not come along and point that out to you that they will be matured enough to understand, yes, <laughs> we all fall short of the glory of God, Sister Lynn. There ain't nobody perfect out here. But in the big picture okay, of what has been being shared and the vast majority of how it's been being shared, I can assure you, has been in love. And anyone who says it hasn't been is a liar. I got pretty near 800 videos. Just go back through them. I guarantee you, 9 out of 10 videos will all be in the spirit of meekness, the spirit of love, the spirit of joy, long suffering, patience, kindness, meekness. 9 out of 10. Will there be an occasional video? When I've come after somebody in the Lord, or that from one reason or another, I myself might be under oppression, you better believe there will be. And if there isn't, then I'd really be a liar. There's nothing worse than a fake that comes out here, Miss Nicey Nice or Mr. Nicey Nice all the time. They make me sick. I know they're lying, because nobody's that way. We're working towards the goal to be changed into the likeness and image of Jesus. But until that which is perfect comes, that that finished work of faith might take place in us and through us all, trust me, we ain't there yet. Nobody. But I hate a phony worse than I do. I, You know, give me somebody who, who will I, I can honestly own up to a mistake and have been proven wrong and had proof and correction which you know the marks of a true son some whippings give me somebody that's had some whippings I don't want to listen to somebody that's never even experienced what it is to get any whippings you don't get weapons for being good and right Sometimes you have to suffer for righteousness sake, which many of you don't even seem to understand, but it's, it's going to be a lot easier to share with you. <laughs> when, the, when that letter rain falls, I pray to the Father for it. Father God, let it be, let it be this coming feast of, uh, let it be this coming Pentecost. Let it be this coming, okay, feast in spring, okay? Let it be that Holy Spirit come upon them in that double portion. And the church, the wheat, finally be awakened. I pray. <laughs> then they'll begin to hear. And some will begin to see. And the hearing will get with the seeing. And the two of them will get with the voice. Okay? that's being spoken through the many waters. And they'll all come together and be made 
one. I so sincerely pray for that day. Don't... <laughs> oh, my God. I can tell you guys, with all sincerity, there isn't anybody out here, okay, who doesn't want, nor need, and or pray for the peace, the love, the unity, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, so that all I want to do is just hug you and hold you. I want you in my house. I want you in my home. I want you in my life. I want you to be every aspect and every part of me as I am of you. Which is what the Jesus' will is for us. That we be made one as he and the Father were made one. I and you and you and me. Laying down our lives to one another. In love. But not this glossia pretend to be false covering. Be for real. Actually, literally, get involved with another brother's sister and sister's life. Don't sit there talking about it. Do it. <laughs> I can't wait till you start doing it. Then I can keep my mouth shut. Because I don't want to have to be used by God to talk to you and to have to say things to you that some of you, oh my God, I don't want to have to do that. I want to be all happy, joyous, and free and just celebrating in the love of God in and around the brethren and everybody be at peace and in love and in obedience and submission so that the anointing of God is poured out upon us and just it's just the most wonderful thing you ever experience. That's what I want. But if you think we're going to get there and that we're there right here, right now, and that until then, there isn't going to be a battle, okay, against the powers and principalities of the air who are influencing the cardinally minded, earthbound people out here using the gospel, okay, as a weapon, not for the sake of salvation, but to beat one another up with it. If you don't think that's going to happen, then you're just not facing the reality and the truth of what's going on around you. And it's time that you wake up to it so you can see it. It's a bittersweet thing. I shared that with my sister Tiffany. Yes, by all means, the Word and the love, the Holy Spirit. It's just, oh my God, it's so sweet. To the lips, to the mouth. Oh, you just can't get enough of it. You just, you want to swallow it all up. Put it right inside me. Get it all up in me. So I feel, woo! Amen, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Praise it, Father. Guess what, though? In order for the transformation to take place, that sweet tasting Oh my God, it's so good. It's got to go from your mouth to your stomach. And that's a picture of working out what has been worked in. And that, my friends, is a bitter herb. Sour in the stomach. Sour in the working out. It's not a pretty sight at all. I shared with her about Moses' wife, which I've shared with you guys before. She's cutting Moses' feet. The feet, the feet, the feet. The, feet. <laughs> the blood on the feet, the feet, the feet. So anyway, she's cutting the feet. And she's saying, it's a bloody mess. It is. It's a bloody mess.
So, <laughs> I wanted to encourage her and, and help her and comfort her in what I know she's seeing and that she's got to deal with now between her and her father. And I hope I helped to point her in the right direction. <coughs> and that uh, my prayers are with her. Because I believe she's been called out. And uh, although I did not get my reply from her, about <laughs> two weeks ago, I she commented me on one of my videos, and I commented it back to her, but I never got a reply. She said she'd get back with me. She never did. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I also offered to her that, uh, you know, in the Word it says that Jesus was not a, Jesus was a comely person. In other words, he was not an attractive man. And I shared with her how that's like the gospel. Nobody on the, you know, looking at this uh -huh. bloody mess would want to have anything to do with it. There's no appeal to it. Just like Jesus. Okay? It's after we get into it by the grace of God that he starts opening up our eyes and our ears so we can actually hear the truth that's been written in the Word of God for us to receive. Then we, then we understand and know the truth about the reality of the world that we live in and, and the truth of the reality of this man. Okay. Oh, wretched man that I am and you are. Woman. Woman, man, and man, man. <laughs> it's a bloody mess. And it's not attractive. It's not something someone would want. So, we grow and we mature and we learn to come out. We overcome, crucify the flesh, nature. Don't go crucify yourself. It's the flesh nature. And put to death the old man, the cardinal mind. Okay? So we got the flesh nature and the cardinal mind. They both have to be put to death. Okay? And uh, so in the process of that, you got the wheat and tares growing up together. And then you got all this false kundalina, kundalini spirit, false circumcision out here, using the word of God. Okay, to beat up a brother or a sister. Okay, rather than to speak the truth in love, because I don't cut no. Uh, I, I've told you before. Depending on uh, in the spirit and in the discernment of the spirit regarding the individual making the video, I'll come right through the juggler vein. Because if I think he's matured or she's matured and they've been in the word and I can sense him. The fact that they are, and they're a lot, and they're sharing this big fat lie. Strong meat is to be given to them who are perishing, and that's the putting the death of the old man. We get strong meat, the word of God, exhortation, admonition, rebuke, strong meat to them. Who are perishing. So I give it to them. Oh, that's not very loving. Yeah, right. Let me just let him stand there and let the bus come along and knock him over. <laughs> now that's love. Oh, brother. Oh, sister. Don't you think that this or that ought to be true? Bam! Man, snatch him up out of the fire, man. Don't be letting Don't sit there. Oh, I'm, I don't want him to think I'm not loving. <laughs> what are you worried about what they think about you or don't think about you about? Praise God. It's between you and the Father. He knows who you are and who you ain't. 
And trust me, if you're trying to people please people out here, your brothers, so-called brothers and sisters in the Lord, so that they all think well of you and you just speak so nice and pretty and joyful and all kinds of decorations like on a Christmas tree, <laughs> so many souls are going to hell listening to you that it, the, the, Father, God, nobody will get saved. Sometimes you just got to speak the truth. In love? Yes, it's in love. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother to spend any time sharing the Word of God with you, exhorting, admonishing, rebuking, correction and reproof, receiving and giving, if I didn't love you. What kind of ridiculous is that? Come on. I mean, if I jumped out of here for 30 days and just ran off my mouth, jumping up and down and beating on people and took off and never stuck around long enough for any of us to come into a relationship with one another, well then maybe you could say I did that and I didn't do it in love. But I've been sitting here for two years, but <laughs> left myself open to you to receive and to give, all right, in fellowship. How is that not in love? I tell you folks, the wise will continue to get wiser, the light will continue to get brighter, and if you don't understand that you're going to see the manifestation of God through Christ in us come forth in the brightness of that light in the brethren among us, then I don't know what you're looking or waiting for to have happen. Because it's going to get real bright out here real quick. <laughs> All right? And if you think you can stand in that day, you better think again. All right? <laughs> oh, Father God. So things have been about the body, the believers, the sons and daughters. Get a clue. Come on, wake up. Praise God. <laughs> It's a joy unspeakable, way beyond anything you ever thought. All right? But there's a price that had to be paid. Jesus paid the price so we could enter in and then pay the price of laying our lives down in the natural realm, spiritually speaking, suffering the crucifying of our flesh. You think that wasn't going to hurt? You think there wasn't going to be some pain involved? Oh, I told you about that Pollyanna gospel, that Pollyanna gospel they got out here. Pollyanna ain't going to get you in the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters. Ain't going to get you set free. That's going to lull you back to sleep, and you're going to miss what's getting ready to take place. Because it don't last for long. A lot of you are going to be standing right here and sitting right here three, four, five years from now. Still going in a circle arguing with each other while the darkness get darker. And the door will have already been shut. And you won't even know it. And then you'll go running back over here and say, let us in! Let us in! Let us in! Go from me, you doers of inequity. When I sent my sons and daughters and my brothers and sisters out there to gather you in, you wouldn't listen. You didn't want anything to do with it. Now the door's shut and you want to get in. It don't work that way. I love you guys. The Lord be with you and bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen.